Okay, so welcome back everyone. In this video I'm going to explain how to analyze the data from the Airtable Antics Lab. And what I've got here are some sample data from uh, a trial that I took uh, a short while ago. And so you'll see the dots labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. Just, this is just a small portion. It goes up to like, you know, 25, 30, 40. And next to it are the distances. So for example, that first number, 0.47, is what I met, measured for the interval from the first dot to the second dot. So in the amount of time it took the air puck to go from 0.0 to 0.1, it traveled 0.47 centimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a table of the interval distance in centimeters. So this is called the interval. And we're going to say that this is measured plus or minus 0.02 centimeters, um, but yours depends on how good your eyes are. So my first interval distance was 0.47. And then you can see that I measured a couple others, and I had 0.55 was the distance between points 1 and 2, and then 0.77, and then 0.85, and 0.94, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to just put those first few in the data table. So it's 0 0.55, 0 0.71, 0 0.85, and 0.94. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is, well, this is how far the air puck went in one short period of time, but we also want to keep track of the so-called total distance. Okay, so this is going to be D total in centimeters, and this is going to have the same uncertainty, plus or minus 0 0.02. Okay, so after the the first interval, well, it's got a total distance of 0.47, right? In the next interval, it's 0.55 plus 0.47. So I think that's 1.02. Likewise, the next one will be 1.73. The next one will be, I think, 2.58. Check my math. And then the last one will be 3.52. Okay, so that's the total distance. And we probably need to have one other uh, column on this. We want to talk about the so-called elapsed time. And we'll talk about the uncertainty for this in a short while, but this is 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, and 0 0.10 and so forth. The reason that we know this is that this spark timer is set to 50 Hertz, which means that it's going to be making 50 dots per second. So that means if it's 50 dots per second, it's 1 50th of a second per dot. So the time it takes to go from 0.4 to 0.5 is 0 0.02 seconds. Okay, so now that we have this, of course, we can make one of our graphs, and that's going to be a graph of the total distance versus the elapsed time. Not the interval distance, but the total distance versus elapsed time. So columns two and three. And we can put this on Excel, we can put on the computer, um, we'll find ways to make this go faster. This data table, we will talk about how to work with this in Excel, um, but for right now we're just going to write out by hand. The next thing we're going to calculate is the interval speed. So the interval speed is going to be in centimeters per second, and we'll talk about the uncertainty for that in a little bit. So how do you find interval speed? Well. The definition of speed is average speed is the distance traveled divided by the amount of time. Okay, so for the first one, we're going to do 0.47 divided by 0 0.02, and that's going to give us 23.5. However, because of sig figs, we're probably going to round that. 
okay? So I'll write it out. It's actually 23.5, but 0.47 only has two sig figs in it, so I'm going to round that to 24. Okay. Now, we have to be very careful. I really made a mistake. I should have taken this distance. That's truly what my interval distance is. So disregard what I did. Because a common mistake that people will do for the next one is to take the total distance 1.02 and divide by 0.04. So 1.02 divided by 0.04 is like 25.5. But that's not correct. As a matter of fact, what we want to do is we want to take the next interval, so 0.55, and we want to divide that by the next interval of time. And the next interval of time is not 0.04, it's the amount of time that passed between 0.02 and 0.04. So it's dividing by 0.02. We're going to be talking about this in class, but we're always going to be dividing by the same thing. And again, it comes out to be 27.5, so we have to round that. 27.5 rounds to 28. Okay, for the next one, it's not 1.73 over 0.06, it's 0.71 divided by 0.02. And again, that rounds 36. 0.85 divided by 0.02 is 43. And 0.94 divided by 0.02 is 47. Okay, so once again I want to reiterate that when we're finding the interval speed, or in other words, what was the speed of the puck on average as it went from one dot to the next, we're taking the interval distance, which is column one, and then we're always dividing by point zero two seconds. Okay? So it's very important that we do this. This will allow us to make a second graph and the second graph will have elapsed time on the x-axis and then this will have interval speed so v interval in centimeters per second on the y-axis. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is find the change in speed, which is also centimeters per second. And the first one is uh, undefined. We don't write that. But then after that, it's going to be the current minus the previous. So this one would be 4. The next one would be 8, and then 7, and then 4 again. And it would keep on going. And that's all we would do with that. And then the final column is where we're going to calculate the acceleration. And that's going to be in centimeters per second squared. And again, we'll talk about uncertainty for that in a moment. So to find the acceleration, we know that we have to do a change in speed divided by how much time occurs. So for example, we don't get any number for the first one but the second one would be 4 centimeters per second divided by 0 0.02 seconds. And I think that's 200. The next one would be 400. And the next one would be, rewind if you need the equation again, 350, and then back to 200. And that's how we would calculate accelerations. <clears throat> We're not going to be graphing the acceleration right away, but let's take a quick minute to talk about uncertainties. So one of the rules for uncertainties is that when you take a measurement and multiply or divide by a constant, you do the same thing to that uncertainty. Okay? So if I have a measurement of delta D is 0.47 plus or minus 0.02 centimeters, okay, then if I if I divide that by a constant, in other words, by 0.02 to get the speed, well then the 47 gets divided, and that's what gives me my 24, but then the 0.02 also gets divided. 
So in other words, my uncertainty kind of retains the same percentage. Because if you think about it, 0.02 out of 0.47 is the same ratio as 1 out of 24. And so we're going to say that this interval speed is always going to be plus or minus 1. Now that all hinges on how good you thought your distance was. If you don't have 0.02, then you'll get a different number. So then, uh, these will also be plus or minus 1, basically. And when we take that and try to find acceleration, well, it's the same rule. If I have 200, um, I'm sorry, if I have 4 plus or minus 1, and I'm dividing that by 0.02, it's going to give me 200 plus or minus 50. So one thing that we notice is that the uh, amount of uh, uncertainty kind of skyrockets, but the percentage seems to stay kind of constant. And we'll be talking more about this in class, in particular how to put this into Excel.